Hello, soon to be licensed nurse practitioners. This is Ms. Cohen, and I am presenting to you today the Nurse Practitioners Board's Review Pharmacology. So, pharm, scary. I know. Is there an easy way to remember pharmacology? Nope. But let me teach it to you. Let me share with you ways that you can comprehend it, ways that there is some memorization, and we'll talk about those. Um, but you're better off understanding the classifications of these drugs so that you know how to apply them. And we're going to talk about them as we go through them. Now, before we go ahead, I personally think the best way for you to memorize, and here I say again, memorize some of these drugs is to do, um, what do you call it? Note cards. Literally, write on a note card, for example, Cipro turn the card around and then write down things like UTI for complicated cases or, or um, um, what else do you use Cipro for? Uh, anthrax, right? Um, now, and you do that for whatever else you need to, but there's other ways of applying your knowledge to bring you closer to getting the right answer on the boards. For example, when we talk about uh, beta lactam family, right? Your penicillin, amoxicillin, all of those guys. Those you got to think about ear, nose, and throat. I've mentioned this in other lectures because it's important. So I may be a little bit redundant, but redundancy here means something. You got to know it, right? So back to the ear, nose, and throat. Everything is connected. Your ears is connected to your nose, it's connected to your throat. So how do you treat those areas? Pick something in the beta lactam family. Penicillin, amoxicillin, you'll be closer to finding the right answer that way um, because you comprehend that this area is treated with that category. But again, there's other things that you have to memorize. Um, for example, if I say to you Lyme disease, doxy, right? Pretty simple. Um, but another way to apply the knowledge is, for example, when we talk about fluoroquinolones, right? This is a category of pretty serious drugs. This is what I like to refer to as the big guns, right? You save the fluoroquinolones for your very serious cases. For example, when we talk about community pneumonia, right? Community acquired pneumonia. These are the people who are immunocompromised, the elderly, right? They have a lot of comorbidities. You're not going to give them something light, right? Like a beta lactam. You got to give them your big guns because if not, they're going to die on you before the medication does even touches them right? So fluoroquinolones, they're your big guns. What else do you know about the big guns is that they're known to cause tendon rupture because they're big guns. They can cause damage. So there's funny ways to uh, learning the drugs. But in this presentation, I'm going to throw at you just bits, bits and pieces of what you really have to know when going into the boards, okay? And if you've heard some of these drugs, uh, or information in my other lectures is for a very good reason. Make sure you know it, okay? All right, so table of content. We're gonna talk about rules to succeed for the boards uh, when we talk about pharmacology, some stuff that you have to memorize. We're gonna talk about the respiratory drugs. We're gonna talk about metformin, that's a big drug. Insulins, thyroid interpretation, right? Hypo, hyper, endocrine, cardiology, cardiology, the, the um, the low lows and the calcium channel blockers and the thiazides, right? We're going to talk a bit about dermatology drugs, otitis media versus externa. We're going to talk about some pediatric pharmacology management. And if you're not doing FMP, you can skip the pediatrics. We're going to talk about a few adult vaccines you should know, pregnancy drugs, neuro, bone and muscle, gastric, urinary, right? INR interpretation, here's a big one, sexual health miscellaneous stuff and we're going to finish it up with some sample questions and oh my god I'm sorry you guys I didn't put any makeup for you today because I'm a mother uh, a recent mom I just had a baby two months ago and when you're a mom you ain't got time for makeup so pay attention to the lecture not the video okay rules to succeed right everything mentioned in this presentation is fair game to show up on the board so what are you going to do you're going to watch this lecture as many times as you have to in order to comprehend and memorize whatever needs to be comprehended and comprehend and memorized 
Pay attention to the clues in the questions. This is very, 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 very important. As you're reading questions on the boards, you can just start picking up on clues, right? That make you think about a diagnosis. It's like your antenna goes up as you're reading these questions and picking up on the clues. And we're gonna talk about some of these clues that you should be aware of, okay? When studying, don't focus on specific drug doses, but rather safety. Boards is all about safety. And remember, they expect you to know the very basic foundation of knowledge for safety. So don't read too much into the question. That's another big one. All drugs are mentioned by generic and trade names on the board, on the boards. They may use drug classes, such as like the anticholinergics, instead of using generic and trade name of drugs. So make sure you know your groups. And we're gonna talk about those too. The test will use commonly named drugs, well-recognized drugs. So don't freak out. You don't have to know the entire Hippocrates here, right? Worth of drugs, but we'll talk about the ones that you really have to know. Some stuff you have to memorize. For example, your classification of drugs. Which drugs are your macrolides? Erythromycin, azithromycin, clarithromycin. You see the suffix myosin? Well, that's your macrolide, your myosins, M for macrolide, myosins, okay? Cephalosporins, you don't need to know the generations. That alone can take you a week to memorize, but the boards won't ask you what generation does this cephalosporin fall under, okay? Don't waste your brain cells here. Quinolones or your fluoroquinolones, this is your Cipro, your Floxacin, your Levoquin. Levoquin, so when you think about uh, quinolones, think Cipro under the waist, right? under the belt, right? For like UTI, um, serious UTIs, okay? Not the basic UTIs that can be treated with, we'll talk about. But um, Levoquin is your for fluoroquinolone for up north, so your lungs, right? So your Levoquin will be for your immunocompromised patients for community acquired pneumonia. Don't give them Cipro, Cipro's for down there. When we talk about sulfa drugs, you know, we consider Bactrim a sulfa drug and Macrobit is not a sulfa drug. I just wanted to point that out, but I needed to make sure that we did discuss nitrofurantoin or, or Macrobit, which we'll talk later on the uh, presentation. But do not think that Macrobit is a sulfa because it's not. It falls under its own category. And tetracyclines, tetracycline, doxycycline. You do not need to know which antibiotic treats gram positive versus gram negative. Thank God. Leave that for the doctors. Actually, they don't even know that too. Leave it for the pharmacologist. <laughs> so let's talk about respiratory drugs, right? Lung infections with comorbidities, big guns, right? If you don't treat people with comorbidities or immunocompromised patients with your big guns, they're going to die on you before the drug does anything. All right, by the time you figure out the drug was not strong enough, they're dead. No comorbidities, use a macrolide, right? Isithromycin, clarithromycin, macrolide. If the antibiotic, if antibiotics were um, introduced in the past three months, um, like a doxy, you would want to introduce a doxy, a levofloxacin, or an azithromycin, clarithromycin, plus uh, amoxicillin or augmentin. So an example would be you have a young, healthy um, guy with pneumonia, right? You should know from my respiratory lecture that young pneumonia or the healthy pneumonia is treated with um, like a macrolide, okay? If three months go by and they still have symptoms, what does that tell you? The macrolide did not, the macrolide, the, um, the pneumonia did not go away. They need to have something stronger. And then what do you do? You pull out your big guns, right? The little guns didn't do anything. Now you got to treat with your big guns. So you pull out your levofloxacin, which is your, your, your fluoroquinolone. Or you can try doxy or try that combination that we talked about. Makes sense, right? Pertussis whooping cough, all right? This is caused by bordella pertussis, which is a gram negative, which nobody cares, the boards won't ask you, but you need to recognize that this cough is described as hacking cough. And that's a huge clue. When you're reading a question, and I don't care if the question is a paragraph long and it takes you 60 seconds of your precious three hours to take the exam, to read, or if it's a sentence, 
But if you see hacking cough, ignore everything else on that paragraph and know we're talking about pertussis. And what should you know? You should know that um, when you get pertussis, it's got this hacking cough and it's so strong and, and, and violent that you may even vomit. Okay, it lasts on average two to three weeks. How do you treat it? You give them a macrolide. Absolutely, azithromycin, erythromycin, or clarithromycin, myosin M macrolide. Okay. Additional respiratory stuff you should know. Strep pharyngitis. Remember I told you ear, nose, and throat. Think about the beta lactam, penicillin, omoxicillin. And if this doesn't work or you're not in the mood to give those, go ahead and introduce a macrolide that it's okay. Ear, nose, throat. Mono. Remember mono? What you should know about mono? Mono is viral. How do we treat viral infections? We kind of let them do their own thing, run their course, and we do not give mono an antibiotic. Why? What happens if by mistake you give a mono patient a penicillin or a moxicillin or whatever? They may develop this huge lacy rash all over the body and they're going to freak out, come back, sue you, and it was such a stupid mistake. Mono, you let them run their course. So ibuprofen, Tylenol for the symptoms, no antibiotics, okay? Allergic rhinitis, all right? Allergic, allergic, allergic. I never said anything about purulent material. So we're not talking about infection. We're talking about allergies. What do you give them? Intranasal steroids, antihistamines, right? Decongestants, all that stuff that you would take for allergies, allergic rhinitis, not sinusitis, right? Okay. Acute rhinosinusitis. Now, what the boards want to make sure you comprehend is that and that you know, is that we don't just throw antibiotics the minute somebody walks in and they're like, I have purulent such, all right, boom, prescription, have a good day. Why? Because it increases or we're concerned with the increased risk of um, antibiotic resistance, right? So give them a chance, give them a chance, give them 10 days before you prescribe an antibiotic. And guys, you'd be surprised how amazing the human body is, but for them, I don't want to say for the most part, but your, our bodies are able to fight an infection, even if it's caused by a bacteria. But here, you know, especially in America, we love drugs that it's so easy for somebody to just prescribe you something so you don't have to deal with it for 14 days or more. So you can reduce or limit the symptoms to like three days, right? But the boards want to make sure that you don't overprescribe. So if somebody comes with symptoms, and I don't care if they're purulent or non-purulent, Give them at least 10 days before you prescribe an antibiotic. antibiotic. Give them a, a, um, a, a, like a, I don't know, like a, what do you call it? A naso, nasonex? Yeah, give them a nasonex. Give them something symptomatic management, but hold on to your prescription pads, okay? Let's move on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was just a small little piece of the live review courses that I offer. And I still have the recording available for you. So if you found that interesting or helpful for your studies, I welcome you to come into my website, cohenreview.teachable.com, where you can access the remaining of this presentation. In addition to it, I offer the printable version uh, of the PowerPoint presentation so you can use it for your studies. I not only offer, well, ladies and gentlemen, that was just a little small preview of the live review courses that I offer. If you found that helpful, I welcome you to come into my website, cohenreview.teachable.com, where you can access the remaining of this lecture. Now, I also offer the printable PowerPoint presentations so you can study along as you watch the video. I have other parts. I have part A, part B, and part C. And it really doesn't matter which test you're taking. It could be the AANP, ANCC. You could be going for family. You could be doing adult GERO or even the acute care. All of my content will be extremely helpful regardless which test you're taking. So welcome to my website coinreview.teachable.com and come access the remaining of this lecture. I also offer an entire 
review course, super cheap compared to what's out there. All right, you don't need to spend hundreds of dollars. I offer it for very, very little and you can access it for up to three months. And if you need an extension, just let me know. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was just a little small preview of the live classes that I hold. But if you like this style of teaching or learning and you want the rest of the presentation, then I welcome you to come into the cohenreview.teachable.com where you can access the remaining of this video. And also I offer the printable PowerPoint presentation so you can study along. Now I have part A, part B and part C. And it really doesn't matter which test you're going for. You could be taking the AANP or the ANCC. You could be going for family practice, adult gero, or even the acute care. All of those tests are covered in my review. And my content is very, very helpful, especially if you're trying to condense all the material before you're gonna take the test to make sure that you're ready. In addition to the live courses, I have probably the most inexpensive um, entire review course called the Cohen Review, where I go over each system. So again, I welcome you to come and access the content. I have some free videos on my website, which will be very, very, very beneficial for your studies. If you have any questions along the way, please shoot me an email at thecohenreview at gmail.com. And if you're not following me on social media, such as Instagram or Facebook, I welcome you to do so not because of I want to become popular or have more followers. It's just because I'm constantly loading tips and little study materials and things that I may not have in my reviews that are just updated content that you must be prepared for to see on the test. So again, welcome to the Cohen Review. Come see my stuff. And thank you guys for trusting my work in advance. And I wish you the best of luck with your studies. And don't forget to let me know when you pass because I want to make sure I congratulate you.